You're watching KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar, working for you. And this is Saturday, March the 2nd, and you have indeed entered overtime. The month synonymous with basketball itself is just two days old, and already the Tri-States has had to deal with a lot more agony than ecstasy at this point. You know, one night after captivating the entire nation with Josh Harris's buzzer-beating wizardry, Illinois College was the victim today of a very unfortunate turn. We take you to the scoreboard in this one. Illinois College taking on Washington University at the half. Illinois College was up 10 in this one. Again, coming off the first ever national tournament win in program history, up 10 on Washington University. Things got away, overtime got forced. Illinois College in the waning seconds of overtime had a chance to kind of put some distance between themselves and Wash U. They had the conference player of the year, Jake Mazremus, on the line, and he missed the front end of a one and one, and Washington University got a foul called in the final two seconds, sunk two free throws, and IC's incredible run has come to an end. The Blue Boys are out one game shy of the Sweet 16, but what a season for Steve. Steve Schwer and company, unbelievable work, and I'm pretty sure they're going to be back in the not too distant future back in the NCAA Division III tournament. All right, it was senior day today at Western Illinois. Men's action now taking on SIUE in this one, and Ryan Hillenthal, former Quincy University head coach, on the bench now as an assistant at SIUE. Back in the house, good to have him back in the Tri States early on. Quinlan Bennett is going to break the scoring seal on this one with the pull up J. The next tried to get fancy later in this one, didn't work out with the behind the neck dunk, if you will, but JJ Calicon is there to bail them out with the offensive rebound. And the offensive rebounds today were kind of at a premium in this one. Good take for him. Then it was Josiah Westhurn to crash the glass in this one again a bit of a miss but there is Josiah with that considerable bounce of his and the second jump works to his effect Drew Cisse man I tell you what he's as good a shot blocker as you'll find at any level of college basketball see here that's pretty emphatic for Drew at that point then the fun would begin from the outside for the Leathernecks. Ryan Myers dialing up the corner three. He had a big day today. Blast that home, and we're not done. More defense at the other end. This time, Josiah West. Look at him go high to block it on the way up off the glass. The SIU staff, SIUE staff, thought it was a goaltend. They did not get the call they wanted. Later, transition fun between Cisse and West, and Mr. West is going to clean up nicely at the rim right there to finish. Western Illinois trying to take back the lead right here. It's Myers to West. Josiah coming inside. Bucket, Band-Aid, three-point play for him. And the fun was just beginning. J.J. Calicon outside, dialing up three. That was good. Then it's Drew Cisse, the big fella. All six, 11 of them from San Diego, California, working to carve out space. And he's pretty effective of that when he does so. Nice take for him on the inside. Good stuff there, as well as... It would be Western getting the bucket there from Cisse. We're not done. Ryan Myers working some fancy stuff after the great block right there by Josiah West. Good stuff from him on the 6'11 guy. It's Quinlan Bennett right here with the transition two for him. Here comes Ryan Myers, as promised, doing the fancy work here. Off the assist from Drew Cisse. Got fouled, didn't get the call, didn't like it, but still got the two at that point. More stuff to come. James Dent Jr. going to make things happen after Drew Cisse hits the wonderful runner right there. You're going to see Mr. Myers do his work here. The point guard slippery is all get out. And yes, that's extra fancy, like really good mustard in this one, or ketchup, if you will. Either way, the condiment is good. And then James Dent Jr. with a three right here. WIU gets the win. They also get the four seed in the OVC tournament. They will play the Tennessee State Southern Indiana and a winner after winning today 76 to 65 was your final Ryan Myers with 24 points on the day all right John Wood was sophomore day today honoring the brothers Tolton the twins doing their thing one last time at home at John Wood at least in the regular season Josh Tolton the quick start the pull-up jumper goes for him then it's future Quincy University Hawk Logan Robbins doing his thing inside nifty finish up and under from underneath right there big day for Jake Wallingford Quincy Notre Dame alum in the short corner here he makes that jumper work to good effect, and nobody's going to contest it at his size. So that's a really powerful weapon. More from Josh Talton, this time doing the Josh Talton traditional thing, the tough take through contact, which he does about as well as anybody. How about Braylon Diggs about to get in the open court? He's about to run and fly and dunk his way to goodness. 12-8, John Wood at this point. The student section, loud and loving it. They would be treated to more fun in this contest. It's Jordan Shelton time. 
He'll get two on the run out right here. Big day again for him. So quick to the hole. So quick with the finish right here. Then a little Braylon Diggs catch and high post fun. Check it out right there. Spins to the cup and he is free and unabated. More from Jake Wallingford as well. He's going to clean up a big win for John Wood today. 74-59 to celebrate senior day or excuse me, sophomore day on a high note. John Wood back in action later this week in the region tournament. All right, Quincy University trying to wrap up the season in this one. This will be the last game, no matter what, failing to qualify for the postseason tournament. Isaiah Foster trying to make it a good final day. P pretty hesitation move. The Hezzy works for two for him. Then Nate Shockey doing his thing as well. The jumper from the corner is going to fly and go in this one. How about some Zion Richardson action? Going to find Jake Hamilton first in transition. The outstanding freshman getting the three, and that's a pretty, pretty bucket right there. A little bit more from Zion here. Battling inside, second chance opportunities. He does that very well indeed. He's going to get that to go. Quincy University, however, got behind early. Waves a major comeback down. I think 23 got it all the way back to seven at one point. Just could never get over the top. They lose today 89-79. The Hawks finish the season 11 and 17, six and four in GLVC play. Back to Macomb for the women today. Regular season finale as well meant senior day at Western Hall. And yes, the kids were enjoying the show in this one. As I mentioned, senior day for Carla Flores. Alyssa Dins and Anna Dietz. And speaking of Alyssa Dins, she's going to start our highlights right here. Appropriately enough, a little back down bucket action for her. Then it's Addie Brownfield time. She's going to steal the ball from the floor in this one somehow and dime the assist right here to Regan McCowan. Good stuff for both of those young ladies. Alyssa Dins again. She's just going to float her way to freedom. That's really poor defense, really crafty maneuvering as well. Then it's Anna Dietz time. She did this on back-to-back -back possessions. Beautiful three for her, and it's 15 to 10 WIU at this point. The first half of this game, kind of a back-and-forth affair. How about a little scrum inside? Everybody on the floor eventually going to touch the ball in this one, but it will be Jasmine Nichols going to take it and put it home, completing the sequence successfully for the Leathernecks off the pretty dime right there. We're not done. How about some Reagan McCowan? You're going to see her come get the, the uh, rebound here, and just the little transition pull-up is an effective move for her. Nice bucket for her as well. More to come in this one. Ali Meadows time. Her runner is going to rim, actually bank home more appropriately, and rim home as it gets the double bounce. Big day for Mallory McDermott as well. She's going to get things started to end the first half pretty strongly right here with an and one move. And then with 106 left in the first half, WIU is going to double a 26-23 lead again, courtesy of Miss McDermott, this time with the triple. That's where we stood at the half. Second half, a beguiling reminder of just how dangerous J.D. Gravina's team can be in this one. McDermott doing the and one thing right here. Then it's Kaylin Reed, the outstanding backup point guard. She looked really good at times today as well, as it would be Western Illinois blowing things open in the second half. 84-56 is your final. 18-11 and 11 in the regular season. 9-9. Nine and nine in the conference. That means the seven seed coming up on Wednesday for the Leathernecks. They will take on Tennessee Tech Wednesday at 3.30 to try to advance and move on to take on UT Martin. How about the Quincy University women trying to wrap up the string on an open and good note today? Samira Williams. Her team uh, working really nicely in this one. Car Carson Stratton gets the inside jumper to drop at that point. Back and forth affair in this one with UIS. Michaela Huffine, coast to coast, fakes the pass and hits the layup. Pretty stuff for her. How about more for Miss Williams in this one? Going to put on the brakes. Everybody's going to fly by. And that's a bucket and a Band-Aid for her. Effective work on the interior. Courtney Boyd happy with the Hawks play as they had the lead at this point. Unfortunately, that would evaporate late in this game and UIS would hand them a loss. 79 to 74 is your final there. How about a big sophomore day for the John Wood women as well? Blair F. Tink, as mentioned last week, back in the fold. Surprisingly enough, great to see her back on a basketball court. She proved a difference maker again today. Camilla Zabinski with a three-pointer right here to beat the clock early on in this one. Lady Blazer, Blazer's not done. Alexis Pullman getting in the paint. She'll get the easy lay-in for two right there. And all of a sudden, the momentum building for a potential upset of ICC. Never easy to do. Katie Flynn inside to Pullman. Big night for Pullman, who had 17 points. Then it's Madison Doran, a triple from the wing. John Wood at this point down seven, but for not for long. 
they would suddenly get some momentum cooking in this one. Oh, it's the locals playing in as well. Love the Kitty Flynn game. That three automatic for her. And then it's Blair Eftink. Speaking of automatic firing, she gets the three, and John Wood gets the upset today, winning by the final count in this one of 61 to 52. Not pictured here, Jada Dupree, who had 19 points to help lead the charge. Big win for John Wood headed into the postseason coming up next week. One other score to pass along to you tonight. You know what? We can tell you that Clark University can still repeat as the national champs, but they will not be repeating as the Heart of America Conference Tournament champions as they lose and get upset. I think that's just the second loss of the season. This one to Benedictine, 64-61, the pride of Central Lee. Maya Mershman had 12 points in that loss. Again, 13 days, and Clark will again try to continue their bid to repeat, this time, of course, without Courtney Boyd. But again, we'll keep our eyes on that because we are certainly interested on what happens with Miss Maya Mershman. And and speaking of interested in the future, we got a big super sectional coming up on Monday. Coming up straight ahead here on Overtime, we will preview the showdown between Winchester West Central and Illini Bluffs. You're watching KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar, working for you. And welcome back to Overtime, everybody. There are just two high school basketball teams in the Tri-States left alive on the path to postseason glory. And both Macomb and Winchester West Central are one win away on Monday from Final Four bursts. Regardless of what happens from here on out, I think both teams are already unqualified success stories. The Bombers were supposed to be buried on Wednesday at the altar of state powerhouse Peoria Manual. And last night, the Cougars finally crossed their own vexing basketball Rubicon. Uh, it's huge, especially whenever uh, my uh, brother's senior year, they got knocked out in the uh, sectional championship by Madison. So it's huge just to get their uh, redemption for them. You know, they had a really good group. They had a shot to make the state and they got knocked out early. So we've got that shot and we're just going to take it uh, every step of the way. You know, we kind of sat down our three seniors and talked about uh, what's our number one goal for this this upcoming season. And it was to get to the bowl, get to the bowl. And uh, it's a special atmosphere there and uh, something we've never done since this coaching staff has been here. Uh, we haven't won a sectional title, and so that was number one goal for us to do this year, and we accomplished that. Uh, it's awesome. I mean, I went to, like, all of them. I've went to all of them, and it's just a crazy atmosphere, and it's awesome to play in it. Mission accomplished, as the Cougars finally get to be participants and not spectators at the Bowl on Monday night. But getting there Friday versus Calhoun certainly wasn't easy. We know Calhoun very well, so it was good to come out with a win. But, you know, we uh, had a game plan going in. Got to stop them from going inside. And, you know, we weathered the storm. It was going back and forth all night last night. So we just kept playing, kept pushing. Even, things, even when things weren't going our way, we just kept playing. And just one more bit of evidence as to how battle-tested and now big game savvy this Cougar squad has been made to this point. Uh, it's really prepared us, you know, playing Principia, that is an extremely, extremely good team. Then you're playing big teams like Q&D, uh, higher A teams. Um, they just bring a lot of good competition and it helps us at the end. Yeah, this is a group that's played in several big games, winning the Beardstown Championship. Uh, Waverly was an amazing atmosphere over there in the small gym over there um, against a really good Auburn team. And then the Winchester Championship against another rival, WIVC route. Uh, so this group has played in a lot of big games, and uh, you know I think we're able to keep our composure. I think it's just our uh, team chemistry. You know, off the court, on the court, we're all just one big happy family. Uh, no matter whether we're playing basketball outside together or in the gym, we know we just stay connected and we just have a great atmosphere uh, to play in front of, and uh, we stay together, and that helps us there in the end. Well, you know, with, with, with Zach and Chance as our main two scorers, uh, but what's made this team go is, is everybody playing their role. Uh, and that's, that's led to where we're at and our success. Uh, you know, the Carson Brown rebounding, uh, a couple big steals last night, uh, the Cam Seavers coming in and, and just playing really hard and, and being that motor for us off the bench. Uh, I'd argue he, he might be uh, the best six man in the, in the state of Illinois. Um, but Riker Ford making timely shots for us this year. So, um, you know, we've had and you know we've had guys step up and 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 play their role this year. 
Monday's showdown with Illini Bluffs looms as the biggest one yet. Quite literally, with Chance Little and Carson Brown tasked with stopping six foot nine all stater Hank Alvey. Uh, I mean, Alvey's got to be one of the best big men in the state of Illinois, and uh, he's a load to stop, and it's going to take a group effort, team effort to. Uh, to slow him down and contain him and uh, you know it'll be a challenge for us and, and especially for those two guys. Yeah just go into him and try to draw a foul if he blocks your shot he blocks your shots. Oh uh, they're big they're really big uh, we just gotta stop Hank inside of course I mean he's a handful. They, they have several guys that can shoot the ball they're big they're I think they start like 5'9", but then they're like 6'3", 6'4", 6'4", you know, 6'9", so they're a big team. Uh, I really like the white, uh, you know, Devin White for them. Very athletic guard off the bounce, off the dribble, gets downhill really well, and, and if we don't box him out um, and contain him on the boards, uh, you know, he, he can cause fits as well. That said, not all of the advantages in this game skew Illini Bluffs way. I think that we can beat them in transition. If we beat them in transition and uh, we knock down some shots, I think we'll be just fine. Yeah, we think we can use our quickness to our advantage, so it should be a good game. And you might add crowd support at the bowl as one more potential Cougar tipping point. Absolutely. I, I think we have one of the best fan bases in the state of Illinois. Several of our road games, we have more fans than the, than the home team does. Uh, so it's going to be a, a special atmosphere, and our boys feed off that energy that the crowd gives us. And, you know, I think we're going to be ready to go, and our guys are going to be pumped up and, and ready for tip. -off. And yours truly will be at the Bowl on Monday to cover that one. Zach Richardson's got Macomb as well. Well, Quincy High's quest came to an end of one of the more brutally painful ends last night in recent memory. But as Andy Douglas was gracious enough to remind us all in an emotionally wrenching aftermath of that normal community loss, stories aren't defined by their conclusion alone. It's been a phenomenal group. I mean, you saw the crowd tonight. Uh, it, this, this is great. I mean, the fans showed up, students showed up. I mean, and all for these guys and what they've been able to put together all season long. Um, I couldn't be more proud of them. Couldn't be more proud to be their coach. Uh, you know, this is a tough one. This, this one hurts, uh, but you know, they have a lot to be proud of. They, they did this, you know. Uh, these guys weren't in the uniforms, they did this. I mean, they, they, they got, you know, they got fans to show up, whether it was at home or on the road. I mean, uh, this has been a really fun group to coach. It's been a fun group to watch. Playing the toughest schedule that we played since I can remember. Um, you know, and, and not just that, but the growth that they've made. I mean, the, the growth of individually that they've made, the growth as a team that they've made. The only thing I could say is I love each and every one of them. I mean, uh, games like this don't come down to one one person, one play, uh, one mistake. Uh, this is a team game. It's a team sport. Uh, we wear this one as a team. Uh, I made just as many mistakes as anybody else did coaching this group. Uh, but, you know, uh, again, I'm, I, I love each and every one of them. That was the main takeaway, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm extremely proud of them. I got to start one more for you. know, you see after tough losses, it, it can be easy for guys to, to go their separate ways and uh, take this the way, take this on their own. You know, to, to see the guys come out and you know, hugging each other, yeah. being around each other, you know, that, that means a lot. That, that means a ton, doesn't it? That's, that's this group. You know, this this is this group. They've they've grown really tight together, uh, led by these seniors. Um, you know, they they care about each other, um, and to see them embrace the way that they did after a tough, a tough QA this morning and look for the QR code to enter and win. For complete contest rules, go to khqa.com. You're watching KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar, working for you. Game three today of a four-game set between Quincy University and Davenport. QU trying to bounce back after losing the opener of a twin bill today, 6-3. to three. Bottom of the fifth, tied at three. Dustin DuPont with a single to center. Then Brock Boynton is going to follow suit. But unfortunately for the Hawks, they couldn't play to anybody, so the game is still tied at three. Fortunately for QU, Tim Reinholds was dealing today. He gets a batter coming up right here to chase the fastball up, and he's not done. This is pretty. This is even prettier. Reinholds going to paint the corner right here, freeze the batter. We're still tied at three apiece. 
How about this? Top of the seventh. Runner on for Davenport. And Ryan Holes pitches the 6-4-3 double play to get out of the jam, the problem, and to keep this thing all tied up. Really anticlimactic finish, but a victorious one for the Hawks as they win this game on a bases-loaded balk. So that gives them two of three with one more to play tomorrow. Zach Richardson will have those highlights for you coming up right here at 10 o'clock. By the way, a sort of pseudo sweep for the Culver Stockton baseball team today. Their second game canceled due to darkness after they beat William Woods in extra innings in the opener eight to seven. Its second game ends up at a 6-6 tie. You're watching KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar, working for you. And welcome back to Overtime, everybody. I have no idea what this week or next weekend will entail, but with any luck, we might be covering not one, but potentially two state championships, maybe a couple of OVC conference championships right here on Saturday. This week is going to lay it all out for you. So super busy week ahead. Again, as we mentioned previously, Zach Richardson with some QU highlights for you and a story coming your way tomorrow. 